Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to take a look at the next part of Unit 9, Section 3, which is about the concept of thermodynamic favorability, and this time we're going to look at the numerical way to talk about that, which is delta G. Now that represents Gibbs free energy. Now, Gibbs free energy, delta G, is, like I said earlier, a measure of the thermodynamic favorability of a reaction. And the way that we mathematically calculate delta G is using this equation right here. Delta G equals delta H minus T times delta S. Now, delta G is what we call Gibbs free energy, and that's a measure of the thermodynamic favorability of a process. If that delta G is a negative number, that means it is going to be thermodynamically favored. However, if the delta G is a positive number, then it's not going to be thermodynamically favored. And the units that we use are kilojoules per mole. Now delta H, we've learned about that before in unit 6, and that's change in enthalpy. That's also given to us in kilojoules per mole. The T represents the temperature at which we're carrying out the process. Now, if you ever see a little uh, degree symbol, as we sometimes see with these thermodynamic values, that means that we're at standard conditions, and temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, or 298 kelvins. Sometimes we have to use a different temperature, though, unless it uh, specifies that. Delta S is the change in entropy. Now, you might remember from... Uh, an earlier video, that entropy is normally given in joules per mole per kelvin. Well, in order to make the math work out, we have to have consistent units. And so we're going to have to convert to kilojoules per mole per kelvin in order to make everything work out. Now, we're going to do a couple examples with this. Here's the first one, and this is a reaction that we've worked with a few times already in the last couple of videos. It says to calculate delta G for this reaction, and notice that we're given delta H and delta S. So once again, we're going to plug and chug into this equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So delta G is what we're solving for. It says to calculate that, and delta H is given to us up here, it's 131 kilojoules per mole. Now, for the T, do you know what the temperature is? The problem doesn't actually come straight out and tell us what that is, but that little degree sign right there, when it, especially up here when it says calculate delta G, that little degree sign tells us that we are at standard conditions, which would be 25 degrees Celsius, or 298 kelvins. Now, delta S, is 134 joules per mole per kelvin, but we have to convert it, so that's going to be 0.134 kilojoules per mole per kelvin. So now we just do the math on this, and if we multiply these two values together, we get that we have 131 kilojoules per mole minus 39.9 kilojoules per mole, and when you subtract that, you find that the delta G for this process is equal to positive 91 kilojoules per mole. So what's the significance of that positive number? Well, like I said earlier, if it's positive, that means that this is not a thermodynamically favored process at this particular temperature. Now let's do another problem, a, a different example. This is very typical. It looks like the same equation, but this time the question says, at what temperatures would this reaction be thermodynamically favored? So once again, we're going to use delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And we have to remember that when we're determining at what temperature this reaction is going to change over to start being thermodynamically favored, that means that the delta G is going to stop being positive. So it's going to go from positive to negative territory. And the boundary between positive and negative is zero. So I'm going to plug in a zero for my delta G in order to determine the, the threshold temperature at which we go from being not thermodynamically favored to thermodynamically favored. So that's why I'm plugging in a zero here. Now delta H, we're, 
We're going to assume that delta H and delta S don't change as temperature changes. It's not completely true, but it's, it's almost true. So we're going to just uh, go ahead and plug in those numbers. Delta H is 131 kilojoules per mole. And then the T is for temperature. We're solving for that threshold temperature. So that's our unknown. And delta S, once again, we have to use uh, consistent units. So it's 0.134 kilojoules per mole per Kelvin. And now I'm just solving for T. So I'm going to bring the 131 to the other side of the equal sign and divide both sides by negative 0.134. And when I do that, I find that the T equals 978 kelvins. So that's my threshold temperature. So what this means is that since both delta H and delta S are positive, we know this is going to be a thermodynamically favored process at relatively high temperature. So that means at temperatures higher than 978 kelvins. So that's the answer. If I can get this reaction above 978 kelvins, all of a sudden, this reaction is going to be thermodynamically favored. So that's how we can calculate delta G using this equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Now there is another way to calculate delta G for process. And this is going to look familiar to you, especially after we've done this a couple times already. We can actually use the individual Gibbs free energies of the substances in the reaction. Delta G for a reaction equals the sum of the Gibbs free energies of the products minus the sum of the Gibbs free energies of the reactants. And once again, if this looks familiar, that's good because we did this back in unit nine, section two, as well as all the way back in unit six. It works the same way for delta G as it does for delta H and delta S. So if we have a copy of that thermodynamic data uh, list, we can consult that. It's in the workbook, or I will also put, post it in the description below. Here's a reaction that we can use to solve for delta G. We have lead ions aqueous plus two chloride ions aqueous yields lead two chloride solid. So if we look at our table of thermodynamic data, we notice that the delta G for lead ions will be negative 24.4 kilojoules per mole. Well, we only have one mole of that, so there's really nothing to multiply by. Chloride has a Gibbs free energy of negative 131.2 kilojoules per mole. However, we do have two moles of this, as we see in the equation, so we have to multiply this by two. So that's why this is going to be negative 262 0.4 kilojoules. Then on the lead 2 chloride, we can consult the thermodynamic data and see that its Gibbs free energy is negative 314.1. So there's only one mole of that, so that doesn't change. Well, now we can sum up the reactants and negative 24.4 and negative 262.4 add up to, uh, to give us negative 286.8. And then, of course, there's only one product, so there's nothing to add there. And this is products minus reactant. So that would be negative 314.1 kilojoules per mole minus a negative 286.8 kilojoules per mole. Of course, we remember that those two negatives make a positive, And this gives us an overall value of negative 27.3 kilojoules Per mole. So we can see that, yes, since it's negative, this would be thermodynamically favored, at least at 25 degrees Celsius, which is our uh, standard condition. Hope you learned something about Gibbs free energy and how to calculate it. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, a like, and I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to move on to Unit 9, Sections 4 and 5. Thanks for watching.